So I'm here to speak about uh, load testing in Go, specifically HTTP load testing, and the tool I built uh, for that. And we're going to start uh, by looking at the overview of how the talk is going to be composed. Uh, this is a pretty repetitive. Usually developers don't like to repeat themselves. I'm not one of those. Uh, and first, we're going to look at why we should load test, and then where, what, how. It's pretty abstract for now, but let's start by why. So why should we load test? Uh, first, I'd like to know, have, well, at least try to see how many people do regular load testing of their production environments. I really can't see. <laughs> OK, good. Uh, yeah, so these days, um, pretty much every company has an API. Uh, or they're moving into a service or into the architecture or microservices, as they call it uh, today. Um, this creates a big dependability chain in, inside your, your company. You need to be confident that when your load changes from some time on, you're going to be able to handle it. So really, load testing is about knowing that your infrastructure is going to handle it before your users feel the pain. And for me, that's a really important goal, to have greater confidence in this sense. Uh, so if done correctly, it's really about avoiding disaster. This, uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> can be seen as disaster. Well, so if this is so important, why, why don't you do it more? Well, as I looked, no one does, did it. But uh, uh, well, it's actually hard. Load testing is a hard problem. And there's a lot of misinformation around how to do it well. But uh, we're going to look at how we can uh, try to be better at it by starting with a common question that everyone wants to know, uh, ask about their systems. And that is, how many requests per second? So how many requests per second can we do? And, but really, that's not enough to, to ask. You need to refine this question a little more. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to refine this question until we have a good question that we can answer. Starting by where. So where are we going to load test? Load testing uh, your development environments might be the first thing that comes to your mind because it's safe. You don't affect your real users. Same thing for staging. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the environments that uh, are in companies are not uh, replicated as production. So really. Testing production is the only way to get really meaningful data out of your system's performance. And uh, for you to load test production, you need to know your request path. You need to know your infrastructure. You need to see how your request is going to spread out. And you need to know your dependency graph from beginning to end. For instance, if you have caches in front of your web servers, uh, you need to be aware of that, because that's going to affect your results. So after you know what you want to load test, you need to isolate it. Uh, for you, you must, might be thinking, so if you're going to load test production, I'm going to affect my real users, the quality. So that's a good, good point. Uh, but you should just do it gradually. You should, should uh, start slow. Start slow, improve from there. Adapt your load generation strategy until you actually have meaningful data out of it. So don't go DDoS yourself. So we know that we should load test in production. That's the where. So what should we load test? Well, if you have an API, you probably have lots of endpoints. Each of these endpoints is, can be seen as a transaction that you're going to execute in your system. Um, but you should really isolate all of these endpoints, all of these transactions, and test, it, test them individually. Because that's the only way which you can actually gain insight into how each of them performs. Uh, in this case, it's an arbitrary endpoint where we return some posts. So how many requests per second? This is the same question we had before. But series highlighted how many. What does how many mean? Most people think that load testing is benchmarking. What is the difference? Well, benchmarking is testing your system at its peak capacity, right before it crashes or you know, it starts not being, having acceptable response times. It's like testing it at its peak. It's a lot of fun. 
<laughs> I like it. I like to do it personally. But uh, it doesn't give me the information I need on how my system is going to perform in the different sorts of load. Uh, so load testing is it's about predicting the future. It's cool, huh? It's about predicting how a system is going to deal with different kinds of load in the future and not necessarily at its peak. Well, but then we have this mouthful. And what all this means really is that uh, the latency of your system is a function of your load, the load that is inflicted in the system, and your capacity. And these are things that change over time. When your infrastructure changes, grows, shrinks, uh, when your user base grows, you have growth, you have surges of, of, uh, of load. Um, to really reap the benefits of load testing, you need to be constantly adapting your strategy of load and your acceptance criteria. What is acceptable? So what is acceptable? Um, what is sustainable? How many requests per second can we do sustainably? People have a really hard time usually starting to answer this question, so we ask them. Uh, so is it okay for your users to wait 10 seconds for each request? No, no, that's absolutely not okay. Uh, so what about an average of 100 milliseconds per request? Yeah, that seems reasonable for some definitions of reasonable. Uh, but what if I told you that even with a 100 millisecond average, 1% of your requests would return in five seconds? Oh, but that's, how can that be? That's not good. That's not a good thing. So, no. Uh, a 100 millisecond average is something that you shouldn't consider. You should never look at averages. Never. I'm stressing that. Because online software systems rarely exhibit normal response time distributions. So averages are hiding outliers. They hide the real behavior of your system. They hide the peaks, the things that hurt your users. So you should really look at higher percentiles. You should look at your maximums. Those never, ever lie. Don't just close your eyes, like here. Close your eyes for the averages. OK. Most of all, when you know what you should be uh, looking at, you should define acceptable behavior. Before you go on and you start slamming your servers with requests, you should define what you're expecting from it, how it should behave, what is acceptable. Define your expectations, define acceptable behavior, define your boundaries under different kinds of load. And once you have, and once you have that, once you have what you expect, then you can test for it. You can assert that it actually performs this way. So this is the most important thing in load testing. Okay, so we covered why, where, and what. Well, let's see how. And this is what I like to call seeking the answers. This is a little dramatic. Um, so I'm going to start by, I know I built this tool called Fujeta. I'm going to present to you a little bit later. But uh, this is not the only tool that exists. So I, I, I lay out the solution space in this form. And load testing is really about three stages. Uh, it's the load generation stage. It's a matrix collection stage and the analysis and reporting. So for load generation, uh, you can do it in a constant way, as in you, you pick a constant load rate of requests that you want, and your load generation phase is going to reliably put that load on your servers. You have dynamic, which you can like sample traffic patterns from production and then try to replicate them uh, uh, dynamically. Matrix selection can be black box or white box. What does this mean? Uh, black box means that you don't use your internal monitoring systems to collect metrics. You, you just, all you use is the load generation tool. And then you sample back the, the latencies that the request took. And this comes in the end for analysis and reporting, which will give the information that you're looking for. And this can be manual, which is me or a human, like looking at the results, or integrated into an automated workflow uh, on our CI environment. For instance, every time you push uh, something to production, you say you would have a CI environment where we actually load test uh, a, set and, uh, a replica of your new software or a new revision with some load. Okay, so meet Vajara. Uh, who knows who Vajara is? Oh, so, so many Dragon Ball fans. 
Okay, by the way, Vegeta is called Vegeta because I was at SoundCloud at that point, and I was writing a service uh, called Goku. And so, uh, <laughs> it made sense to attack Goku with Vegeta. Uh, and Goku was, was replacing uh, our stream. Uh, so, Twitter has the timeline. Facebook has a news feed. It's the same thing for SoundCloud. And we needed to validate that it performed well. Uh, this is the GitHub page. You should, uh, at some point, check it out. And uh, so how does Vegeta map into what I looked before? Vegeta generates load constantly. It's a constant load test tool. Uh, and uh, it can be used black box, so it, has, uh, it collects the, the metrics back. And you can do manual, uh, manual introspection into this data and analysis. Of course, it can very easily integrate it into automated workflows, uh, and if you use your monitoring systems to analyze that, it can, use, can be used just as a low generation tool. And let's go for a quick tour. Uh, this is the very simple version of a low test, a would be low test, to, for .co. Uh, and uh, we are basically attacking the .co website with uh, 1,000 requests per second for 10 seconds, and you are using the default reporter. Vegeta has uh, decoupled the load generation phase and the reporting phase, the metrics collection. So we can very easily do a dis distributed load test. If you have a couple of machines like you have there uh, and Vegeta there, you can just run that in parallel, and those machines will put the results in their file system. After that, we get these results, and you report them on them, which you aggregate and sort them. So this is distributed load testing made easy. There, there is an ethical aspect of load testing, which people can confuse it with, like, DDoSing other people, and, and you can actually use the same tools for that, so uh, ethical note, don't use it for that. <laughs> Disclaimer. Uh, too many things for you to read, just Vegeta grew over time to support more things, like certificates and body files, headers, infinite uh, reading of uh, lazy streams of targets. You should really check it out at some point. Um, it is, was born at SoundCloud, it is used by SoundCloud, Heroku, NPR, BBC, and the UK government. <laughs> uh, so, why Go? At that point, I was only writing Go, pretty much. Uh, so, a lot of familiarity. Uh, which was and still is my favorite programming library to get things done. Um, a really good HTTP library, which uh, saved the day for sure. Concurrency support was great, which is something we needed. Uh, and despite being a garbage collected language, and despite uh, having green threads uh, scheduled on it, which are called GoRoutines, um, it was good enough to maintain a constant request rate even with possible pauses. Uh, overall, it worked well in practice. It was good. Point of the talk. If I w there is one thing that I want you to take out of this. is the following. If you want to load test, you need to know production. You need to know your request path, your dependencies. You need to test there. And you need to define your expectations of your system. Only when you have expectations, like other kinds of tests you do, like unit tests. You define expectations, you test against them, right? So, load testing is the same thing. You need to define what's your, what are your boundaries are, what is the acceptable behavior. Once you have that really refined question, or set of questions, you can use tools to try to answer those questions. Vegeta is my go edit, no pun intended, uh, but there are other tools. I hope you try it out if you need. Uh, it's important to load test if you expect growth in your traffic. Uh, it's important to gain confidence that your systems are going to behave well in the future. It's important that you find your bottlenecks before your users. Thank you.